Nokia Plaza, LA Live outside our window here at Access TV Studios. Staples Center there in the background, and they're having a video game convention, I think. Yeah, League of Legends. League of Legends. Yeah, and there's a red carpet and everything here. I, I, I wonder who's going to walk. The red carpet. Since Are you the video in this? Because because you've been in successful video games no. before. No, I was in Grand Theft Auto Four. That was a good one. That was a really good one. That's now it. five is out. I, it's the only one week. I saw because you were in it. To be honest. That, yes, it was good. In the men's room, you yeah. got to go online on YouTube, Boss with in the men's in, room, GTA Four. You're gonna laugh. Room. In the really men's funny. room. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. UFC's longest reigning title came to an end when Anderson Silva was upset after taking a crushing left from Chris Weidman. Not many people saw it coming. Mm -hmm. Well, Silva didn't see it coming, did no, he? No, no. It's the one that you don't see coming, huh? Yeah. Come All right. Try. Now the man who many will consider the greatest UFC fighter of all time. He holds virtually all the records, but he doesn't have a belt anymore. Ron Kruk caught up with the former middleweight king, Anderson Silva. Anderson, it's been about three months since your seven-year reign as UFC middleweight champion came to an end. What lessons did you learn from the Weidman fight? So the fight is the fight. You have the magic moment you need to pick it up this moment and keep going how has your life changed since losing to chris weidman no too much it's the little because i'm normal guy now but for so long you were looked as not normal that you were this incredible undefeatable type of fighter what was the 24 hours following the fight like for you? I go back to my home and I go back to fight. It's normal. Initially, you said you weren't interested in a rematch. What made you change your mind? So I don't change nothing. I have nine more fights in UFC in my contract. So then I say, you go for a rematch, I go for a rematch. That's it. There were those, Anderson, that said in this fight that you were cocky or overconfident and you let your hands down. However, you like to have fun in fights. You clown around, you dance, you do put your hands down. This is me, definitely. Same approach coming into this fight? Same. This is me, Anderson. Yeah. All the people watching me for a long time in UFC, oh my God, it's perfect. I changed what? I don't need to change nothing. I don't fight for the, the my hands down because I like it for for the people. No, because this is my style. This is me. Following the fight, there were those critics that said, well, Anderson threw the fight. What was your reaction when you hear crazy talk like that? <sighs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Didn't bother you at all? <laughs> yeah. Jesus, man. The people talk too much, but the people don't, don't go inside for octagon, for fight. The people don't train for five, seven, eight months for training. So it's too much. What is going to be different about Anderson Silva this time around? More strong. <laughs> Physically and mentally? Yeah. The Jedi secret now. <laughs> he might use the Jedi mind trick on me later. I'm not sure. Can you do that? <laughs> do you look at the loss to Chris Weidman as a fluke? That it was a lucky fight? No. Is the God gave him the chance for a long time for change the life, the people, the kids, the new guys for come for this this sport, and God gave the chance for Chris for the belt. Chris is a good guy. It's the same. We have the family, we have the the your dreams. So Chris is the new champion. The older people need to respect. I respect Chris. Anderson Silva, as always, we appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. You bet. Kenny and Boss, back to you.
Thank you, Ron, and thank you, Anderson. What Did you notice anything different about Anderson this time in this interview? He was very happy also, but he got a little annoyed with that question. He's going to change one thing, though. What he's not going to do anymore is planting his feet and then moving back like this with two feet next to each other, I guarantee you. Because if he does that, well, it might happen again. That's the only thing he needs to change, though, because he started stopping the takedowns also. You know, so uh, it's going to be a good fight. A lot of people are going to watch it. This could be the most watched. Uh, that's what the UFC is expecting, and... I think they're pretty much spot on it with this. I think so. Too. I think so. Yep. All right, now we bring you to the final bell. Dang. There it is. There, it, it rang, so now it's official. This is where Boss gives his expert analysis on some questions that you might have out there in the MMA world. This week, we discussed the topic of weight cutting, which virtually every fighter in the world, starting back to junior high wrestlers, have to go through. Yep. There's, everybody does it. If you're going to fight, that's just part of the deal. Yep. Now, we want to be real clear on this. Last week, tragic news in the world of MMA. Leandro Souza died as he was getting ready for a fight at Shudo Brazil 43. A lot of things started surfacing because he was, as any fighter would be, cutting weight to get ready for the fight. Shudo president and Souza's training partner, his trainer. Yeah. So, awesome. I mean, the guy knows him as well as anyone. Andre... Uh, Pedradinus told Inside MMA that, quote, his death came from a cerebral vascular accident. When you are cutting weight, what normally happens is that the blood pressure goes down instead of up. That, in this case, could become a CVA. The answer could be something already pre-existing. But we cannot attribute this to cutting weight. Uh, that coming from the man who is the trainer for him and the pseudo-president. So, uh, you know, it's a sad situation. Some people get excited and want to discuss now, is this all because of weight loss? No one knows that yet. That has not been proven, and even his management will not say that. How many people, how many boxers, how many kickboxers, how many passed away because of weight cutting? So nobody, right? Yeah. We don't know anybody. So, yeah, this could be a coincidence. I think, you know, everything gets hot, pump, heart starts pumping harder. Maybe there's something, a little blood clot somewhere because the veins are open. Maybe, but it could have worked in training also. He could have trained, heart rate goes up, exactly the same thing. So, yeah, it's not the weight cutting. All right, so we contact some people. What about... Uh... I want to point out a couple of things right quick. We talked to a couple of guys, one Matt Hume, who's seen a few fighters in his day. Mm -hmm. He thinks that this is much ado about nothing, all this weight talk. That's what fighters do. Yeah. They cut weight. New Jersey is working with the World Boxing Council uh, and is considering a new option for weigh-ins. Now, in theory, as a lot of great theories are, yeah, this, this looks, looks great. perfect. That yep. 30 days out before a fight, let's say that you're a welterweight. You'll be at 187. A week out, you're going to be at 178 and a half. And then you're going to be right on it a day before the fight, right just about at 170. That's in a perfect world, boss. That's in a perfect world. But as you mentioned already, what happens in a last-minute replacement fight? <laughs> you know? And a guy suddenly comes in, somebody gets injured, other guy comes in. Uh, hey, he's outside that month period. Yeah. You know, how are we going to test that? So there's got to be, well, they're going to find a figure it out, I guess. What, but, you know, uh, I mean, a, what, a quarter of the fights, maybe. Chris Weidman became really well-known in the UFC by taking short-notice fights. Yep, true. And, and dropping weight, and so that's, you know, like I say, for the fighter's safety, it all sounds good in theory. Uh, you know, and who knows, Mark Ratner told us this, uh, you know, basically I would like to change the, cult, uh, the culture of fighters who are competing at 155 and coming in weighing 175 the Monday, Monday before the fight. That, to me, made the most sense of yep. anything is that some guys... Would you agree, as a man yep. who's trained some of these guys, you know, you're coming in, you're trying to cut 15 or 20 pounds in a seven-day period? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, some people cut 15 pounds in two days. I always say, keep your body happy. That's why I always fought heavyweight, and I was a natural 200, 205 -er. But I knew that I'm training hard, I'm beating up my body, I give it the food it needs, and I'm going to give it everything else it needs. And water, in the survival rule of three, I always say, the body can go three weeks without food, two days, or three days without water, three minutes without oxygen, but that's why we have the O2 trainer. That's why you have the O2 trainer. But uh, three days, uh, but uh, well, yeah. the water, uh, water is so important. Your body needs to be at 60%, and they just dehydrated. It's never good. All right. Thank you for your insight, as always, oh, sir. Hey. Uh, He's happy. We are, we, we are hydrated. We're happy, and we're breathing out of that Stem O2 trainer. Up. 
first. <laughs> ah, we're ready for Friday finishes. We have to be because guys get hit and stuff flies out and it gets well, it, 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 it gets ugly. And here they are, the best Friday finishes. Oh. Farmley oh. and Valance. You see, now that's a nice knee. No hips in because he was close. Just let the hip flexor do the work. Perfect knee there. All right. Hale and Sims. This is from Prize Fighting Championships 3. You see, and that's the big punch behind the ear. You know, I always did it in Pancras. Hit, tried to hit behind the ear, and a lot of fighters are starting to do it right now. Very effective. Sims by TKO. Jerome Hatch, Ben Robinson going at it in showdown fights. This is like really digging deep here. <laughs> but nailing every shot. Very nicely done. Oh, round one. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Silva with a KO 50 seconds into round two uppercuts. against Madeline. Look at those uppercuts. Whoa. That's called the fast twitch fibers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that that person has that. Look at the power. And he's, he's hit, even hitting him on his hand, I believe. Watch. Boom. See, the hand is just in front of it. Oh, no, that one was a hit. That wow. one passed. That's one of the best knockouts we've seen this oh, year. Oh, beautiful. Boris Minkowski taking on Ben Lagman, still at KSW 24. And that's the best thing you do against a tall opponent. You go first low, do a right straight to the body, liver shot, then come over the top at the right straight. He didn't do that there, but he went started from low, and he went up. The best thing when a fighter has his hands like this, because he's taller, he has to look down to see where you're going, which exposes his jaw. Uh, Thank you. You're very welcome. That was good. Don't yeah. don't be exposed. Don't touch that dial, Don't folks. touch that dial. He, he'll know. <laughs> the War Master is live to break down his UFC 168 battle against Travis Brown. And this special twist to our WTF moment of the week. This is Inside MMA.